Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, I hope you are fine and doing great. In this and few of the next videos, we are going to see how we can program a PLC using ladder logic diagrams. That is one of the standard programming languages for PLCs. In fact, this programming technique is directly related to the electrical diagrams that engineers and technicians can easily understand. That is why normally a program for a PLC is initiated using ladder diagrams. However, other programming languages are later on either added to the ladder diagrams or ladder diagrams are converted to those languages completely. So, let's explore how we can program a PLC using a ladder logic diagram. As we have discussed in the previous videos that PLCs have microprocessors in them that need some kind of a program, that is instructions, to figure out the states of the outputs from the states of the inputs. So a program is needed for PLCs that can tell them how to use the inputs to figure out the state of the outputs. Though there are several programming languages that are used to program microprocessors, those languages are way too difficult for factory floor technicians and engineers. Therefore, if technicians and factory floor engineers need to operate PLCs, then PLCs should be programmed in languages that are easily understood by the concerned personnel. Well, before 1993, every PLC manufacturer used a different programming language having customized rules to program its PLC. However, in 1993, International Electromechanical Commission or IEC standardized the languages that may be used for programming the PLCs, no matter from what manufacturer they come. The standard IEC 61131-3 talks about the standard languages which are the ladder logic, instruction list, sequential function charts, structured text, and function block diagrams. So no matter which PLC you are working on, it may be programmed using one of these languages. However, a normal practice is to use ladder logic for starters and then incorporate function blocks into the ladder diagram. Function blocks may be produced using structured text sequential function charts, or instruction list. Well, in this video, I am going to talk about ladder logic programming only. So, let's start. Consider the simple electrical circuit shown over here. Using the conventional flow of current, there is a high voltage point of the DC input source connected in series with a switch, then to a motor and ends at the low voltage point of the DC input source. Now, what if I draw this circuit like shown over here. I have a high voltage line on the left and a low voltage line on the right. In between these lines, I have attached a switch and a motor in series. You should appreciate that there is no difference between these two circuits. Only the drawing style is different. Well, this one is the ladder logic representation of the simple motor circuit. In ladder logic, high voltage line is always on the left while the low voltage line is on the right side and are called power rails. In between the power rails, different components are attached. It is conventional to use inputs on the left side whereas outputs on the right side. Moreover, a single horizontal line that contains various components is called a rung. R-U-N-G rung. Well, this is the simplest ladder logic diagram you can make. And congratulations, you have made your first ladder diagram. Just as another example, consider this ladder diagram. You must be able to interpret its meaning. There are different things you can do with this ladder diagram. For example, pressing a latching switch 1 will turn on the motor. However, if normally closed switch S2 is pressed, it will disconnect the power to the motor. The holding switch is connected in parallel to the latching switch 1. So if you hold down the holding switch, the motor will turn on and will turn off as soon as you depress the holding switch. If you want to program the PLC using ladder diagrams, then the only requirement is the ladder diagram. There is nothing else needed. And while drawing a ladder diagram, you should keep in mind the rules for drawing one. I have already explained what the vertical lines are. These are the power rails with the high voltage rail on the left and the low voltage rail on the right. The horizontal lines containing the electrical components are called rungs and ladder diagram is always read from top to bottom and from left to right. 
the last rung having an end block signifies the end of the ladder diagram so that when a PLC processor sees this, it updates the output statuses in the corresponding RAM locations and jumps back to the first rung of the ladder diagram. Inside the rungs, as I have already said, the inputs are always assembled on the left and the outputs on the right. All devices, whether the input or outputs, are shown in their normal states. That is, if we are using a normally closed switch, then it should be shown as a closed switch. And when it will be pressed, it will open up. However, a normally open switch should be shown as an open switch, and when it will be pressed, it will be closed. Moreover, a single component may be used in multiple rungs. However, the address used to point to that component must be the same in all rungs. Components having different addresses are considered as different input or output devices by the processor. And lastly, let me remind you that depending on the manufacturer, the suitable format for addressing the input and output devices should be used. This list over here shows standard forms of different components that are used in ladder diagram. For example, these lines represent different configurations or connections through which power lines can be drawn. This symbol is used to represent a normally open switch or contact, whereas this symbol represents a normally closed contact. Lastly, this symbol is used for an output coil that may represent any connected output. It might be a simple LED or a motor or some other actuator. Well, if you want to draw a ladder diagram that can turn on a motor or an actuator through a single normally open switch, then this will be what you should draw. A normally open switch is connected in series with the output coil and when the normally open switch will be pressed, the power will flow through the output coil causing it to turn on. And if the switch is depressed, the output will be de-energized. On the contrary, opposite will happen if the switch is changed to a normally closed switch. Now you can see over here that if the switch is not pressed, the power will be relayed to the output coil and it will be energized. Whereas if you press this switch, the contacts will open up and power to the output coil will be disconnected. The program that we just produced is fine, but if you want to implement it on a PLC, you need to assign addresses to all the components so that the components may represent a corresponding real input and output component. So for that, you need to address the components in a format depending on the manufacturer of the PLC. Examples are shown over here for Mitsubishi, Siemens, Ellen Bradley, and Telecommunic. Note that all PLCs will use the same ladder diagram but different addressing format to implement the logic that is represented by the diagram. So far, the ladder diagrams that we have seen are too simple. However, in real situations, a certain output coil or an actuator is turned on or off if a particular condition becomes true or false. Therefore, the ladder logic diagrams should implement the required logic and we already know from the previous videos that logic circuits are implemented using logical elements. For example, AND, OR and similar logical functions. Let's try to understand this point through a simple example. Suppose a drilling machine should start drilling only when the work material is underneath the drilling bit and the drill bit is touching the surface of the work part. In other words, if both conditions are true, only then the drilling should start. This means we need to add the signal coming from the two sensors that will give us the status of the corresponding condition. If one switch or contact represents the presence of the new part and the other switch or contact represents whether the drill bit is touching the work part or not, then if both contacts are on, only then the drill motor will turn on. So, this simple ladder diagram now implements the AND operation between the two input switches or sensors. Similarly, OR operation may be implemented by connecting two switches or contacts in parallel to each other in the ladder diagram. Note that both representations shown over here are equivalent. It can be easily seen that even if one of the switch or contact turns on, the power will be delivered to the output coil. Moving on, a NOT operation may be implemented through a normally closed contact so that when the contact has been actuated or it is in its normal state, the output coil will receive power. 
However, if the contact is actuated, it will disconnect the power being supplied to the output coil, hence turning it off. Following the same procedure and similar elements, various other logical functions may be implemented through ladder diagrams as shown over here. For example, the NAND operation may be implemented by connecting two normally closed switches in parallel to each other, whereas NOR gate requires two normally closed switches to be attached in series as shown over here. And lastly, the XOR or exclusive OR gate may be implemented as shown over here. Similarly, learners are encouraged to practice implementing other logical functions through ladder diagrams on their own. Note that in the next video, we are going to implement such functions on the PLC simulator and verify whether what we have programmed using ladder diagrams is working as expected or not. Apart from simple logical functions that may be implemented through ladder diagrams, there are many other configurations or functions that require certain tricks or techniques of ladder diagrams for implementation. One such function is of latching. Latching means to hold the output state even when the input has gone off. For example, when a certain push button is pressed, the corresponding motor or a simple LED should turn on. But if you leave that push button so that it becomes depressed, the output shouldn't turn off again. So we need something to latch the output so that it can hold its state. Moreover, another stop button is sometimes implemented in such systems that is used to turn off the output coil. This kind of latching may be implemented using ladder diagrams. When input A will turn on, the output coil will be energized and see over here that there is one normally open contact named as output present over here. When the output coil will be energized, this normally open contact will turn on as well. This can be easily done by assigning the same address to both the output coil and the normally open switch. Now, if input A goes back to off state, the output coil will still receive power through the contact named output. Hence, the output coil has been lashed. Now, to turn off the output coil, another input, that is input B, has to be actuated. That will disconnect the power to the output coil, hence turning it off. Now the normally open contact named as output will also turn off. See how a separate switch is used to turn on the output and another one to turn it off. Let's review another example. This example requires you to turn on and off a motor through a start and stop switch. Moreover, a light should turn on when the motor is not operating and another light should turn on when the motor is operating. The ladder diagram shown over here implements this situation. In the very first rung, the start switch, if pressed, will turn on the motor connected to the output address of Y430. Now, if the start switch is depressed, the motor will not turn off because the normally open switch is present in parallel to the start switch, which have the same address as that of the output coil, that is Y430. Furthermore, in the second rung, the normally closed switch will be actuated when the motor will be on. Hence, the light connected at Y431 will turn off. Lastly, on the third rung, once again the normally open contact is named as the output coil Y430 and for as long as Y430 output coil is energized, the power will be supplied to the output Y432 where another light is attached. As soon as the stop switch is pressed, the output motor will turn off, the light connected at Y431 will turn on, and light connected to Y432 will turn off. Hence, the requirement of the situation has been implemented using this ladder diagram. You might be wondering that the output Y430 and Y432 will always turn on and off with each other. Then why can't we have them in the same rung? Well, you can. You may have multiple output coils in the same rung to make your ladder diagram compact and simple. This is shown over here. When conditions on the left side are met, all outputs on the right side will be turned on. Moreover, there is another technique called sequencing that utilizes multiple outputs on the same rung. In this ladder diagram, you can see that if only input A is on, then output A will be on. 
and if input A and B both are on, then output A and B both will be on. And lastly, if all three inputs are on, only then all three outputs will be on. Appreciate that if input present at a higher level goes off, all the succeeding outputs will go off. This technique is implemented in situations where certain outputs should be turned on in a defined sequence only. However, turning them off doesn't require any sequence. Well, dear learners, I have explained ladder diagrams to a reasonable extent and think that now we can implement such ladder diagrams on the PLC. Therefore, in the next videos, we are going to see implementation of various ladder diagrams on the simulated Allen Bradley PLC. So this is everything for this video. Thank you and take care.